Hey Majors, this month we've been talking about identity and how your understanding of who you are shapes the way you live. We've been examining this concept of identity and action by looking at the life of Gideon in Judges chapters 6 through 8. So far, we've seen Gideon acting out the role of coward, yet God showed up and called him mighty men of valor. God didn't describe Gideon how others would have described him and likely not even how Gideon would have described himself. But what do we see? After God calls Gideon mighty men of valor, Gideon starts acting like it. Gideon's going to go to war and lead God's people to freedom from the Midianites who are oppressing them. But first, God tells Gideon to tear down his family's altars and make sacrifices to Yahweh instead. And he did! Now the time is right and Gideon is going to raise an army that God will send into battle. Judges chapter 6 Verses 33 through 34 say this, Now all the Midianites and the Amalekites and the people of the east came together, and they crossed the Jordan and encamped in the valley of Jezreel. But the Spirit of the Lord clothed Gideon. Then we see that Gideon's going to sound the trumpet, send out messengers, and men start to gather from all around to prepare for a fight. Gideon raises an army of 32,000 men. There's a problem, though. Firstly, the problem is that he might have 32,000 men, but that army of all the men of the East is 135,000 men. The second problem is, God still says, Gideon, you have too many men. God tells Gideon to send a bunch of men home. Now there's only 10,000 men. So you can imagine Gideon saying, thanks a lot. I'm going up against 135,000. I had 32,000 and now I've only got 10,000. What am I going to do with 10,000 men against this massive army of the Amalekites and Midianites? So then God says, I want you to send more men home. And bam, Gideon's army now is 300 men. But God says, with these men, I will deliver Midian into your hand. And he does. Gideon and his men surround the camp of the Midianites with trumpets and jars. I remember thinking, jars? Why jars? Well, what they did was they cried out, they smashed the jars to make noise, and then they blew their trumpets. And in the confusion, a bunch of Midianites turned their swords against each other, the Bible says, and the rest fled. Then Gideon's army pursues them, and more from Israel join in, and over 120,000 men fell to this tiny army that God had given Gideon. Why? Well, because God might have used the 300 men, but it was God that gave the victory. Gideon had to obey God. He had to abandon his old identity to recognize who God had made him to be. But God ultimately was the one who brought Gideon victory, not the men fighting for Gideon. I find that it's really important to remember this in my own life, because I tend to put effort and my need to do things the right way first. And I need to remember that ultimately the most important thing is my dependence on God. My success is tied directly to my dependence on God. God's given me gifts for where I am. He's placed people in my life who have helped equip me for obstacles to come, and He is the one who freed me to follow Him in the first place. So yes, you have to obey God, and yes, we have skills and talents that we've been given that we need to use and we need to work at everything that we do as if working under Christ Jesus. But also, Jesus is the one who gives us what we need to succeed. This week, take some time and contemplate where God has brought you success where you otherwise wouldn't have seen it. It's amazing the gratitude we're able to walk in when we recognize who God says we are and what He has done for us. We'll wrap this up next week when we'll be delving into chapter 8 of Judges. See you then, Majors.